Hello students, welcome you all to the video lecture on control systems engineering. Today we are going to construct the root array and determine the stability of the given system and also we are going to comment on the location of the roots of the characteristic equation. So, this is the characteristic equation. While seeing the characteristic equation, the order of the system is phi. That is S power 5 is given. So, phi is the order of the system. So, since the order of the system is phi which is odd number, we have to start with S power 5 term okay, which is odd power and we have to consider the terms only with the odd power. Okay, That is I have to consider S power 5 followed by S cube followed by S term okay, as the first row. So, these terms coefficients we have to consider and that we have to write in the first row. So, S power 5 coefficient is 1. So, that is the first element in the first row. And then S cube coefficient is 2. That is the second element in the first row. And S power 1 coefficient is 3. That you can write here. Okay. And then, so here in this way, that is in the vertical manner, once I completed S power 5, then the next row is S power 4. Definitely the next row is S power 3 then s power 2, then s power 1, then s power 0. So, like this I have to find out what are all the elements it will occupy in all the row. So, from the given characteristic equation, I can determine first two rows of the root array and then the first, uh, by using the elements in the first two rows, the other elements of each row I can determine. So, once I completed with the first row, then the remaining terms are there. That is even power of S is there. Those terms coefficients I have to write in the second row. That is S power 4 coefficient is 1 that I can write, write here. And then S power 2 coefficient is 2 that I can write here. And S power 0 coefficient is 5 that I can write here. So, while seeing itself, you should know that this is S power 5 coefficient. This is S power 3 coefficient. This is S power 1 coefficient. Similarly, it is S power 4. So, definitely this is S power 4 coefficient, S power 2 coefficient and S power 0 coefficient. So, what term you should get here? Similarly, S power 3 coefficient term and S power uh, uh, 1 coefficient term you should get. But those terms you can determine by using the elements whatever you have in the previous rows. Okay. So, in order to get the term here, okay, I have to consider the above four elements. That is first column and second column elements I can use in order to find out the first uh, element in the S power 3, okay. That is what I am saying is I have to consider these four elements in order to find out this element, okay. So, S power 3 is determined by 1. 2, 1, 2. Okay. So, in order to find out the element, I have to multiply in this manner. That is 1 into 2 I have to multiply. Then 1 into 2 I have to multiply. Subtract both the values divided by always the this element. That is your first column, second element I have to divide. That is how I can write as 1 into 2 minus 1 into 2 divided by this value that is 1 okay which is going to be 2 minus 2 divided by 1 is nothing but 0 okay so this element is nothing but 0 similarly i have to find out this <coughs> particular element okay in order to find out this particular element okay you have to leave this particular column okay always you have to consider that is second column element in order to determine i have to consider first column element and third column element that is previous two rows I have to consider in order to find out this uh, second column element the first column and third column I have to find out use and find out ok. So, this and this I have to use and I have to determine this value ok. So, one. 3, 1, 5 I have to use. So, in the similar manner I have to multiply this and this. So, 1 into 3 
and then this and this I have to multiply minus 1 into 5 divided by this particular element that is 1 okay which is going to be 3 minus 5 okay 3 minus 5 it is minus 2 okay so once you have determined the elements in the s bar cube row okay so we have to consider the first column element always in the first column element i should have some values okay but i should not consider i should not have any zeros in the first column elements okay why because i should not have any uh, zeros in the first column element means if it is zero in other column elements and all i may get indeterminate value and all i cannot proceed further in order to find out the constants okay so in order to avoid your zero in the first column element what i should do means i should replace this element by epsilon some constant okay i am going to replace it by some constant epsilon okay for example if i multiply this and this and this and this divided by 0 0 by 0 it will become indeterminate okay or i'll get, uh, here if i get infinity the other terms and all i cannot proceed further and i cannot determine so at this moment whenever i get 0 in the first column always let me assume that it has a some other error or constant like epsilon okay so let me consider it as epsilon and proceed further and finally i can replace the same element by zero and i can conclude what are all the elements you have okay so now this is not zero i am considering it as epsilon okay and i have to proceed further so in order to find out this element okay i have to consider these four elements okay so i need to find out s bar 2 element that is 1 2 here it is epsilon and minus 2 so using this term i have to find out the element so as usual epsilon into 2 minus of 1 into minus 2 is minus 2 divided by epsilon okay so it is nothing but 2 epsilon plus 2 divided by epsilon okay so once you have obtained this term i can determine this term okay in order to consider find out this term i have to consider the previous two rows okay previous two rows but in order to find out this term i have to eliminate these two element i have to consider first column element and third column element okay that that is this value and this value i have to use and i have to find out this element okay so I have 1, epsilon, 5 and 0. Okay. So, use this. Epsilon into 5. Anyway, 1 into 0 is going to be 0 divided by epsilon. Okay. So, like this if you have. So, anyway, epsilon, epsilon get cancelled. I will be getting 5 here. Okay. So, this element is going to be 5. So, once you have done that, I can find out this element. Okay. So, in order to find out this term, I have to consider the previous two rows. That is, these two rows I have to consider. Okay. So, how I have to find out S per 1 term? S per 1 term means I have to consider this epsilon minus 2, 2 epsilon plus 2 divided by epsilon and then 5. So, as usual, I have to multiply these two elements. Okay. So, multiply these two elements. 2 epsilon into minus 2 is minus 4 epsilon. 2 into minus 2 is minus 4. Okay. The whole divided by epsilon I have. And then these two elements you multiply. So, minus 5 epsilon. Okay. So, once you have done that, this whole term should be divided by this term. Okay. 2 epsilon plus 2 divided by epsilon. Okay. Which is going to be. So, let me find out the LCM in the numerator which is epsilon. So, minus 4 epsilon minus 4 minus 5 epsilon square. Okay. The whole divided by 2 epsilon plus 2 divided by epsilon. Anyway, epsilon, epsilon get cancelled. You have numerator as this, denominator as this. So, that term you can use as it is. That is, numerator is minus 4 epsilon mi minus 4 minus 5 epsilon square divided by this term. That is, 2 epsilon plus 2 okay so once you have done this 
okay here i cannot get any value why because these two values are zero okay so i have to find out the s par zero term okay s par zero term means we have to multiply these two element and uh, this into zero anyway divided by this value if i substitute i'll be getting phi all phi always okay so when you have in simple when you have here as zero okay so when you apply the rules and find out always other terms that will get cancelled i will get only this term here okay so i can write simply phi here so if you want you can do calculation multiply this term into this term minus anyway zero divided by this term so numerator and the denominator get cancelled only you will get five here okay so once you have obtained the root array like this now here I have assumed a zero as epsilon, but it is not actually epsilon. It is zero. So wherever I have epsilon, I have to replace it by zero. Okay. So that is the thing. Next, I have to do. Now, this root array, I am going to replace all the epsilon value as zero. Okay. So s power five, it is one, two, three. And s power four, it is going to be one two five, okay. And s power three, it is actually zero, okay. Wherever you have epsilon, replace it by zero. Zero minus two, s power two, it is actually here it is zero. Zero plus two is what two. Two divided by zero is what infinity, okay. So you have zero. Wherever you have epsilon, replace it by zero. Zero plus two divided by Zero. Okay. Anyway, two divided by zero is nothing but infinity here. So next value is five. Similarly, this value here it is zero, right? Four into epsilon is zero minus four. Okay. Minus five into epsilon is zero divided by epsilon two into epsilon is zero plus two. Like this, if you have so minus four divided by two is nothing but minus two. Okay. And s par zero value is five. Okay, so like this, wherever you have used epsilon, okay, replace all the values by zero. So once you have done that, now check your first column elements of your root array. Okay, so we know that whenever all the elements are positive, then I can say that all the roots are going to lie in the left half of S plane, and the system is said to be stable. Okay, so whenever there is a sign changes, then there is a possibility of roots in the right half of the S plane. Okay, so how many sign changes are there? That number of sign changes indicates the number of roots in the right half of S plane. For example, when we see here, so these are all your positive values. So positive, positive, positive. This also positive. You have negative and then positive. So how many sign changes are there? from positive to it is changing to negative and from negative to positive it is changing okay so two times sign changes are there positive to negative positive to negative as well as negative to positive so two sign changes are there in the when we observe the first elements first column elements of the root array okay so two sign changes are there means two Roots are lying in the right half of S plane. Whenever even a single root lie on the right half of S plane, I can say that the system is said to be unstable. Okay, so I can conclude that we have we observe that so we observe that two sign changes are there in the first column elements first column elements of root array therefore two roots lie on the right half of s plane okay so out of that is we have five roots totally out of five roots two roots lie on the right half of s plane so remaining remaining three roots lie on the left half of s plane okay
and the whole system is said to be unstable and the whole system is said to be unstable why because even one root lie in the right half the system is said to be a unstable one okay thank you thanks for watching